My name is Chris Stretch, and I'm a psychotherapist. I'm also a peak performance coach, and uh, my practice is in Hermosa Beach, California. And really, the work that I do is all around uh, the South Bay and even into West LA and other parts of Los Angeles as well. It's been quite a journey to get to where I am today, and it uh, really started out with sobriety, uh, believe it or not. Uh, 2009, I was at the end of a sales career, and uh, I was grinding and pushing, and lo and behold, I was uh, crossing some lines that I really shouldn't cross in terms of using substances and areas that I never would have thought that I would have ever done. Uh, the pressure of the job, I was in medical device sales, was really challenging, and due to my poor performance, I ended up getting laid off. And what this forced me to do was come to grips with a pretty severe, actually a serious addiction. I had a hard time getting out of my room, motivating, and I didn't know what I wanted to do because you know, the, the previous three to four years of sales had been really miserable to the point where I was taking things, you know, substances that I was using on weekends and bringing them into my weekly life, which was obviously wasn't good. So I got into my recovery and I was, I was really committed to staying sober. And what I realized was I was really sick. I would say I was emotionally sick. And I started having these realizations and they were profound. And the realizations were that I was living my life based on what I call emotional rules, or another way of putting it is based on shoulds. And I had to, like for instance, I had to be cool all the time. I had to act like I had it all together. If I was in a group, you know, I, I felt like there was no room for mistakes. And, you know, it just, it plagued me to the point where most of my social interaction was with substances, be it alcohol or drugs or something like that. So most of my interactions, uh, I was usually drinking or doing other things, which to me, uh, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was a huge problem. So coming to grips with these shoulds, these demands that I put on myself to be a certain way was, was first off, it was, a, it was taking things that I didn't know I was doing and, 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 and being aware of them and making them conscious. So that was really the first step. It was painful, but it was profound and I started to awaken. And as this awakening started to happen, I had to decide where I wanted to take my career. The direction I found myself pushing in was towards mental health, therapy, um, addiction treatment, things like that. So I applied uh, for a master's program to eventually become a licensed psychotherapist. And I ended up getting into this program and boom, you know, my life really shifted and really changed. And after I graduated from the program, I started doing uh, psychotherapy under clinical supervision. And while I was doing it, I kept getting flooded, and I'm talking flooded, with all these memories of me playing sports. Because a lot of the problems that I had stemmed from my ability, or lack of ability really, to have confidence, to maintain my self-esteem, to uh, coordinate well with my teammates, uh, to deal with uh, authoritative figures such as coaches. I mean, the biggest thing was to make mistakes and to deal with failure and, and, and to recover. I had such a difficult time with that to the point where in college and even, you know, I played a little minor league baseball, I was going right to, you know, alcohol right after games to try to deal with this anxiety and the feelings that I was feeling. So as I'm working with these people and I go, I'm, I'm, I'm flooded with all these memories of sports and athletics, I really felt this drive and desire to work with young athletes. And right in the middle of this, I approached the Miracosta High School, which is a local high school in Manhattan Beach, California. I approached the, the baseball coach and asked him if I could give a talk to his team. He asked me if I wanted to work with his team on the mental game and come, come by once or twice a week, and I, I was thrilled. So on a volunteer basis, I started working with Miracosta High School Baseball about four years ago. And it just really impacted me. Um, then I met a gentleman named Ken Revisa. Now, if, if you're in the baseball world, Ken Revisa is the top uh, mental skills guy. Dr. Revisa has been with the Cubs for a few years. He was there when they won the World Series after 116 year drought. And he also has been in Major League Baseball really since the 1980s. He was a professor at Cal State Fullerton. So I met him and I really pushed to, for him to be my mentor and, you know, begrudgingly, but eventually he took me on and it's been a wonderful relationship. So I've got a chance to see him talk to a variety of different uh, well, professionals as well as top-notch athletes. And so with all of that, um, taking my mental health training, doing psychotherapy, and I also have another mentor, Dr. Alan Berger, who's a Gestalt therapist, 
and I am a part of a Gestalt therapy community where monthly we run trainings for therapists to learn how to do this Gestalt therapy. So blend them two together and I feel like I've been given the greatest gift in the world. I have Gestalt therapy training and I have this mental skills training from Dr. Ken Revisa. And it gives me this ability to A, work with teams. So I go out in the community, uh, I really try to focus on adolescent uh, sports, whether it's high school, club, travel, and do 15, 30 hour long workshops to help these athletes uh, understand what are mental skills, you know, and how do I use tangible, uh, specific mental skills to help me get through difficulty? I am blessed. I mean, beyond belief to be able to do what I do, given the struggles that I had. So if you're struggling, uh, I have an office. It's in Hermosa Beach, California. So that's in the Los Angeles area. Please don't hesitate to give me a call. I do also uh, you know, have online sessions uh, via Skype or FaceTime, so please don't hesitate to give me a call or email me if you're struggling outside of the LA area. Really, even if you just wanna email me, I will definitely respond to your email if you have any questions because you know, one of the things that I, I never wanna forget is what I've been through and the suffering that I've had to experience in my life. And if you're in that place, I want nothing more than to be able to help you and offer you uh, some support. So uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to me.